When Apple showed off their first Apple Silicon SoC for the Mac, the M1, I was skeptical about the performance numbers and charts that they displayed for the M1 chip. Mainly because I don't use any of the first party Apple made applications, which a lot of the headlining performance claims are seemingly based on. So naturally, I was skeptical about how this M1 chip will work out for my specific workflow for web development and content creation, where I use applications like Google Chrome, Visual Studio Code, Microsoft Office, and DaVinci Resolve, just to name a few. To test this out, I went out and bought the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 chip and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. And for the past week, I've set aside my Core i9 16-inch MacBook Pro to do everything from web browsing to video editing on this machine running the Apple M1 chip. And spoiler alert, this MacBook Pro here performs just as good as my 16-inch MacBook Pro in most tasks, all without the fan ever becoming audible. Before I get into the details of my experience with the Apple M1 chip, I want to preface by saying that this video does not contain any benchmarks or any sort of over-the-top workflows like editing multiple streams of 8K raw video or compiling the Safari WebKit engine. Again, I'm just trying to replicate my typical workflow on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which is a lot of web browsing, some light web development, and editing a lot of 8-bit 4K video. If you do want to see performance benchmarks on this Apple M1 chip, I would recommend you to check out the Linus Tech Tips or Anantech.com review of the Apple M1 chip as they have done a lot of testing and have a more comprehensive view of a variety of performance metrics on the M1 chip. Let me start off my experience with the setup process for installing applications on this M1 MacBook Pro. With macOS Big Sur, Apple has built in several technologies that make running and installing x86 applications a seamless experience to the end user. I use this website DoesItArm.com as a guide to see if an application has a universal binary available so that I can run it natively on an Apple Silicon chip without Rosetta. The full list of applications that I use on macOS are on my website, which will be the first link down in the video description, so check that out if you're interested. So most of the apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis on macOS natively support Apple Silicon, albeit some of them are still in beta, but they were for the most part pretty stable for what I was doing throughout the week. The only major hiccup that I ran into was with installing Homebrew, which in case you don't know what that is, it's basically a package manager for macOS and Linux that simplifies the installation process of software packages. I use it primarily for installing software development tools like Siege and NVM. As of today, Homebrew supports Apple Silicon, but the maintainers of the project recommend running it on Rosetta for the time being, as some things are not yet fully functional, and that techie inside of me decided to go big by installing Homebrew for Apple Silicon. And while the initial installation was successful, I had some trouble configuring my Zish profile, and I ended up spending an hour Googling for solutions and trying to debug the problem, but none of the solutions I found online kind of worked out for me. In the end, I decided to install the x86 version of Homebrew on a terminal running Rosetta, and everything worked itself out after that. Another thing that I noticed was that the Microsoft Office installation took like 20 minutes to complete. I'm not sure why it took that long to install, but the apps itself worked perfectly fine after that. In short, Apple really delivered on their promise of making the transition to Apple Silicon a seamless experience to the end user. I didn't notice any kind of difference in installing applications for an Intel-based Mac versus an Apple Silicon Mac. That's how good it was. And speaking of a seamless experience, all of the applications that I use on macOS just work on this machine. Whether it be a simple utility like App Cleaner that's running on Rosetta, or a heavy program like DaVinci Resolve that's running natively on Apple Silicon, the upload times and general snappiness of these apps are identical to my 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's really impressive given that Apple Silicon or the Apple M1 chip has only been publicly available for a few months now, and the experience is already equal to a top-of-the-line Intel mobile processor. Now, I'm not saying that this 13-inch MacBook Pro here with the Apple M1 chip outperforms my 16-inch MacBook Pro. If it did, the title of this video would be I sold my 16-inch MacBook Pro for the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Where the M1 chip falls short is in the graphics department. This becomes very apparent when I'm rendering a video because my video editor of choice, DaVinci Resolve, relies heavily on the graphics card when it does video rendering. That is one of the reasons why I decided to upgrade to the 5500M graphics card when I bought my 16-inch MacBook Pro a few months back. In terms of real-world numbers, the M1 chip on this MacBook Pro takes about 23 minutes to render the same 4K timeline that my 16-inch takes 
about 12 minutes to render. That's about twice as long, but then again, my 16-inch MacBook Pro costs a lot more than this machine. Not to mention that while rendering that 4K timeline, this machine was silent. Whereas my 16-inch MacBook Pro had its fans maxed out. Like seriously, this past week of using this M1 equipped MacBook Pro, I tried my hardest to get the fans on this machine to spin up to an audible level without resorting to artificial workloads, but I just couldn't get it to do it. The fans were just like silent, and like shut, it wasn't turning on at all. The best that I could do was to get the base of this machine warm, but that's about it. Even when I was on this hour long Zoom call, the machine felt warm to the touch, but the fans never once turned on to an audible level. If I had that Zoom call on my 16-inch MacBook Pro, the fans would have ramped up to an audible level within minutes. On top of all of that, the battery life with my workflow of using Google Chrome was better than what I managed to get on my 16-inch MacBook Pro. The best battery life that I could get on this machine was around 11 hours of mixed usage that included a lot of web browsing on Chrome, some design work with Figma, and a good chunk of web development on Visual Studio Code. Now, if I chose to use Safari instead of Chrome, I might have had a slightly better battery life, but as is, this is very impressive. And I just can't stop marveling on this instant wake feature where I turn it on and the display just automatically turns on. It's just really amazing. I thought it was some sort of gimmick when Apple showed it off during their announcement, but now that I've experienced this instant wake feature myself, I want my 16-inch MacBook Pro to be like that. It's just really cool to do this, you know? Look at that. To sum it all up, this past week of using the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 chip on my personal workflow has made me a believer. And to all you Google Chrome users out there, while Chrome isn't as battery efficient as Safari, some of the battery optimizations that Apple has built into Apple Silicon and macOS Big Sur will help to stretch the battery life of even a resource-intensive application like Google Chrome. I'm very excited to see the next generation of Apple Silicon chips and how this new family of processors from Apple will encourage other chip makers like Intel and Qualcomm to step up their game. That is all that I have to say about my experience with the Apple M1 chip on this 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a like and smash the subscribe button and toggle the bell icon so you can be notified on future video releases. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.